Good morning, everyone. I wonder what direction I should hold the phone so that the wind noise is most reduced. That's a 360 test for my phone. Seed harvest is completed on these two fields. Good job, seed harvest guys. I'm not in charge of that. A different crew comes in and they do it. All the trucking, all the carting, all the harvesting, that is all run by, it's actually local farmers that do it, custom do it, but it's all paid for, not by me. And they did a great job, thank you very much. I'll be very interested in seeing what this ended up yielding. Here is a pivot, corner, swing arm, tail. They have lots of names, but that's the straight part of the pivot that runs in a circle in a square field, if that makes sense. That's why we have this, because then in the corners, it can reach out and irrigate quite a bit more. A lot of my pivots like this run off GPS. That helps steer them. This one's a little bit different. It has a buried cable right along here, and these two sensors point down and look at the cable, and they will follow the cable. It is buried all the way around the field. A little bit older technology, but it still is proven, tried and true, it still works pretty good. This one's still set up with it. So that's how that works. I hope I can explain. I'll just continue explaining pivots and pivot technology because you guys are really curious about irrigated crops in Nebraska. Good morning, I already said that. Welcome, welcome to the show. Okay, I really hesitate showing this because this is becoming our symbol. I think we're gonna call it deer stand field. Started this yesterday with the pivot alternator thing. You guys will have to go back like, I don't know, three videos, watch the last three videos and then you'll understand more. Oh, you're gonna think that I'm a terrible farmer. Started the pivot with water, everything was working, everything was going great. This one is not stuck. Surprise, surprise, that was always been the culprit. So it was the engine, this one's not stuck. Here's what happened. The swing arm that we just talked about got out of track. So this tire should be running here. That one fell in a rut and it got off, so the safeties shut it down. Now we have to come up with a solution with this problem. I could bring the telehandler out here and lift it and move it over, but I think I'll bring the mini excavator to fill in that rut where the tires were running and kind of washing a little bit. Like I've said before, I have a plan in the future for this area to eliminate all of these problems. Can't get to it right now until we harvest this corn. So let's come up with a small solution. Hopefully nothing is hurt or ruined, but I'll fill in that track lift the tire up and then we'll have Laura run it forward while we're out here watching it. So I didn't plan for this today. I uh, didn't really want to do this today. I have a bunch of other projects I need to be working on, but happy Friday. Here we go. came home real quick well for two things oh the clouds just left there's a chance of rain coming this afternoon and I wanted a cinnamon roll with some tea it was very delicious so a little coffee break then Megan said hey could you get this machine out of our backyard in case it rains you know close your door and don't make a bunch of muddy tracks in case it rains so I'm just gonna stop everything that I'm doing and do this real quick. This machine would really like to do a YouTube video with this one. It's a 210G LC. Oh, look, there's my corporation. That's my brand. Um, love this X. Super nice. I want to do a video on it at some point. But for now, let's get it out of the backyard. And we 
are back. I must apologize. Well, not really. You guys don't understand the four hour gap in between the video. You guys are just right back here. I've got the excavator here, the mini. Works really good to get in here. And you can see where I dug out this track right here. This poor tire is so wedged in here that it is trying to climb up that hill, which will be near impossible. So I have Laura running it forward now, but I don't think since we're off the track, it realizes that it's off. Ooh, hold on a second. This is looking good. We're not pulling down. We're turning. Find your GPS signal. And please don't run over my excavator. I should maybe move this thing out of the way. That tire will be able to walk back up and out in line here. Uh, I better get back to work. I will pause the video for one second. Wow, look how tall you guys are. I didn't realize this end gun, this tower, which is usually about 17 feet in the air, dips down this low in the corn stalks. I mean, that is a low sprinkler head, low pressure irrigation. I think I could have done this job with just a shovel. I probably wouldn't have had to bring the excavator out here, but we didn't know, I didn't know. I think I'll come back in here and repair a lot of this while I have it, but I definitely could have dug that out by hand. I didn't know if we were gonna have a GPS issue. This is a GPS swing arm. It is not uh, cable buried, but it is walking through here. We will walk it through here dry. This is the low spot, always full of lots of mud. When there's no water in the pivot, it should be able to walk through this and walk through that. It's really amazing what these uh, low geared pivots can get through and walk through and the amount of abuse that we put them for and they plow right through except for that one we might have had low volts uh, 501 did we go into low voltage mode thank you yeah I'm in the soup I am in the bog and it just, yeah, I have some rock in here, but it just got a little bit and it's going uphill as well too. There you go. It takes actually quite a bit to get these, to get these magnificent contraptions stuck. Feel that cool air, that cool weather, cloud cover. I'll probably scoop out all of this muck and water, the soft spot, just throw it over there in the grass. Uh -oh. Something happened. 510, 501, I believe it quit again, pulled down heavy. Huh? Yeah, I'm on it. Oh, dear blind. Check in on mom's landscaping rock. Wow, what a road. What a wonderful base to drive this tire on. Thanks again, mom. It's working great. I think we can go ahead and start water. Yeah, this should be good. 510 to 501. You may send the rain. And then probably go ahead and set it for one inch. Let's go for an inch and a half. If it rains tonight, I'll shut it off with my phone. And now... I get to back this pickup up a quarter of a mile through that narrow corridor. Alright, I'm going to start backing out of here. Corn. 
So some people ask, well, why are farmers so good at packing, backing things up and things attached with the trailers? Well, because we get so much practice. Dove, bird. Happy Friday evening. I know a lot of you guys come home from work and then go back out to work because you're grinding it, you're crushing it. You're hard workers. And I appreciate that. I'm one of you. I'm out here as well, too. You might be wondering. I'll just tell you. Kale is out in the field with his small Kubota tractor to do a cleanup job. Oh, update on the destroyer. That broke down a couple months ago. If you'll remember, and for you guys that are new here, I'll explain it once again. I'm a seed corn grower. This is a seed corn crop. We have females and we have males. This is actually a 4-2 pattern. So we have two males, four females, two males. What happened here, my destroyer broke down. I had neighbors come in, hired my neighbors to come in and destroy this. And some males got missed. We do not want the seed corn picker to grab this male seed and blend it in. This is not the product we're going for. This is the product that we are going for. Wow. Let's take a minute here. That for seed corn, that is a fantastic looking ear. Anyway, we stumble across this small little air, small little snafu. So I'm gonna be out here with the little tractor and the shredder. It fits perfectly between a 4-2 pattern. It would not fit in a 4-1. If that was the case, we would just use the four-wheeler. So I'll just knock this out real quick then I can go home and rest and relax, right? Or do a live stream. Now, enjoy your weekend, folks. Sorry about that guys, I just realized I didn't finish my story on the update on the Miller sprayer. The engine was cooked, they took it out, we found a replacement from Florida, shipped it up here, and it did not fit, would not work. So we will send that one back to Florida, and I believe we found a repair shop in Omaha that will hopefully rebuild our engine so we're maybe talking maybe another month but hopefully we get it up and going by springtime and as always thank you so much for the subscriptions over 18,000 now over a million views you guys really inspire and encourage me with your comments and support thank you thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart We'll see you in the next one.